How's it going guys? 2018 has been a fantastic year. I'm Kios Prime and I'm here with my final anthem video of the year. This will probably be the last video I do. There will be no videos tomorrow and hopefully I can resume normal service from the 2nd or 3rd of January. With that said, I wanted to start the video by thanking you all for all the support and awesomeness that you've shown to the channel. It's taken a massive upturn towards the end of the year and I'm truly grateful. So onto the video. This video will be primarily focused as the final news posting of the year from me. It will have lots of tweets that was made to the developers. They have been very open with what they have been saying. They've been very communicative. Their engagement with the community has been fantastic. A Reddit user by the name of iGameIT has collated all of this. I'll have a link to the Reddit thread in the description below, but I'm just gonna be going through the tweets and the responses the devs gave and hopefully uh, we'll get some more insight into what's been going on in the world of Anthem and what to expect. If you find this useful, a like rating would be awesome. So close to that 1200 subscriber base, let's make it happen people and hopefully 2019 can be upwards and onwards. Right, on to the first tweet. Ben Ervo was asked, can you stack multiple primers and use a detonator for even higher damage? He responded by saying you can apply multiple status effects you can only detonate one, the last applied. So though you can apply multiple ones, it's only the last one that can actually take effect. Another good question that was brought to the developers, will there be gear for each javelin that can excel in priming combos or detonating combos like an interceptor that only detonates combos for instance, could I have a loadout for that? And a simple response was yes, you can have a loadout for pretty much anything when it comes to the world of Anthem. It actually has loadouts and is a primary function of the game. The next question that was brought along, can all enemies, including every boss, be frozen? If so, do bosses have a larger free status bar compared to other status elements? Ben Irving responded, higher enemies require more stacks of the status effect to be applied. Some can never be frozen. So don't expect everything in the game to be susceptible to certain elements and stuff like that, there will be some that are immune, especially top end bosses. It's no secret that the Colossus will most likely be a tank style javelin. It's got heavy weapons and a shield. So the question asked was, can the Colossus use abilities while shielding? And Ben Irving said, very few. So what they're trying to say is, though the Colossus is by nature a tank, even when defending, it will still have a few offensive abilities to assist the rest of the team and not just stand there and be a brick wall. Pretty cool stuff. A really interesting question, one stemming all the way back from the division. Will there be stat ability bonuses for equipping multiple armor gear pieces of a set? So essentially, will there be gear sets or will there be gear sets with stat bonuses? And there will be no set pieces at launch. This doesn't confirm that there's going to be none, but at launch there will be none, but future updates will likely introduce said type of gear sets, which is pretty awesome and something really interesting to look forward to. Gear sets in the division blew the game's tweaking wide open. So hopefully gear sets here will do the same thing for Anthem. Next question in line was how stat based would you say this game is? Dark Souls or Destiny type? And Ben Irving just said, it's pretty heavily stat based. So expect it to be Dark Souls and not Destiny. Because Destiny 2 is pretty basic when it comes to stats, but Dark Souls is as complex as you want it to be. So it's gonna be pretty heavily stat based. So expect almost like the Division style stats here. If you like to tinker and you like to tweak and you like to play around with min maxing, this is the game for you. The next question might not sound important, but it's going to be fundamentally big when the game comes out. Is there any protection against rage quitters, plug pullers for group content? Ben Irving said, right now we have an AFK timer. We will be monitoring this closely to see what else needs to be implemented. AFKers have been a pain in every game, be it Destiny, be it The Division. Any game of this kind will have AFKers who simply just jump into a game to get free rewards. And if the game doesn't kick them out or if they're moving every one and a half minutes, then they can't 
be kicked. So I'm hoping Anthem do take a proactive approach to this and monitor who's doing subtle movements and hopefully their databases can actually record this data so they can punish those that are actively trying to ruin the enjoyment of others very very quickly and stamp this behavior out. This next one is pretty amazing right? When loading a saved loadout can gear be pulled from the vault or do you need to have them on you? Now most games like The Division, like Destiny, you need to have the items on you in order to be able to equip the said loadout. If you don't have the items on you, you simply can't equip the loadout. It cannot pull from the vault. Ben Irving responded, all your gear and weapons and items are in the vault. It pulls from the vault. How amazing is that? You can literally leave everything you have in the vault and still be fine with your inventory. So those worrying about loadouts and inventory space don't because you can literally pull in game, not via an app, but in game through the vault into your character. Awesome stuff here. Absolutely awesome. What will be the hardest thing to do in Anthem? At launch, strongholds and legendary contracts. After launch, you will see soon enough. That was the response from Ben Irving. And as we're aware, we will be getting what they are calling aspirations and we will be getting other stuff that will enhance the end game catalog. So hopefully we will be getting something similar to raids. I hope their aspirations are something similar to that. And hopefully it won't just appear out of nowhere for the sake of appearing out of anywhere. And hopefully they won't just come out with saying this person has been living inside a wall for the past four years. With that said, I hope the content that does arrive will have some story element to it because story to me is highly important. If someone drops out during a stronghold, will the mission end or can the remaining free players continue? Ben Irving simply responded with continue. The party will essentially be filled up as and when they find a suitable replacement. So matchmaking will be in full effect at all times. Let's get this one out of the way. Does the vault have unlimited space? And the answer is no, because nothing in this world is unlimited. Server space is a thing, and sadly, vault space is not unlimited, but we also do not know how much space we actually have until we try the demo. With the interceptor's auras, can they stack multiple times or just last longer when killing primed enemies? Just one aura. We'll take the latest thing you did. So if I applied a blizzard, thunder, and then fire, when the interceptor goes in and does the combo, it will pull the fire prime and apply that to all nearby enemies. Blizzard and Thunder would be ignored. This next one is really interesting because it shows even the devs don't know the true potential of what's possible and what's not. And that's scarily exciting because it means in a PvE game, especially this sort of thing can be absolutely broken and no one will care. If you have two or more rangers in your squad, Will their support field stack, like two, three, four bulwarks, for example? Ben Irving said, that's a great question. I think so, not 100%. That's amazing. I mean, not that they don't know fully the ins and outs of their games, because let's be realistic. That's for QA to decide if something is working or not. But the fact that there is so much potential impossibilities here, it's almost impossible to test everything, especially in a game this fast. And considering it's only PvE, it means even if something like this is in the game and it is broken, who cares? It won't impact another player in any way, shape or form, right? No PvP means everyone's happy. Next question, is there a better chance for stronger items to drop from a boss or is it the same chance if we killed a basic scar and a boss at the end of that stronghold? Ben Irving says better. We also spawn chests at the end of certain encounters once you defeat the final thing or boss. So it's always worth going through to the end of the encounter and collecting the loot at the end. Simply just going in and killing the trash mobs around you will have a lower chance to drop the said item that you're looking for. Something one of you guys actually mentioned in the chat section regarding glamour and the ability to customize your javelin. Well, here's the question that was put forward. Will you be able to change the appearance of your weapons along with your javelin? 
Can't remember if you guys covered this in your Javelin personalization livestream. Michael Gamble responded, not at launch. Weapons are individually unique. But the key thing here is the fact that he said not at launch, which means it's coming. Changing the appearance of your Javelin, of your weapons, all of this is coming to a cosmetic store near you. So do look forward to it. And if this is your thing, it seems at some point after launch, you will be catered for. Couple questions left. Will the client demo for the January demo be the same client for the February demo? Or will we need to delete and uninstall and reinstall the next demo? Michael Gamble said, good question. It's the same client, so no need to delete. If you are part of the demo team, the VIP demo team on the 25th of January, you will not need to delete that and restart on the 1st of February. You will still have access to the game with the same client because essentially the demo is the retail client. If you didn't notice, it is pretty much the retail code. So what you see is basically what you're going to get. And the final question of the day for the VIP demo, we get an item for trying and playing the demo. When do we find out what this is? Michael Gamble with the help of Jenny have confirmed that it will be a decal available to those that try the game on the 25th to the 27th. Because you pre-ordered or have access to EA Access or EA Origins and are taking part in the first ever VIP demo, you will be rewarded with a decal when the game is released. Pretty cool stuff. And that's pretty much all the key ones that I picked up there. There were a few other ones that we've covered before, like the length of the game and other stuff. So I didn't go into those, but all in all, I think that Anthem is going in the right direction. I think the way the developers, the producers and all have been open and communicative and out there with the community, engaging the community has been fantastic. And we've got some really cool, interesting bits of news here. We've got the fact that we're getting exclusive content. We know that there's going to be more cosmetic stuff coming in the future. We know that there's more endgame coming soon after launch. They did say soon, but there's lots of cool stuff coming. We found out a bit more about the status effects and how they work. The fact that certain encounters will have a much higher chance of dropping more powerful loot. So all in all, I think this is a pretty awesome time to be excited for Anthem and I really am looking forward to it and I can't wait till January the 25th to get my hands on this. Well everyone, this is the final video of the year. I wish you all a fantastic new year. I wish you all a prosperous new year and I'll see you in 2019. Have a good one. Remain legend. Didn't think I forgot, did you?